After starting our time in South Australia, getting to visit two of the best distillers in the state, it's time to get back to basics. And where better to do that than in the world famous Barossa Valley? With an array of high profile wineries mixed with boutique cellar doors, this region is a hit with tourists and it's easy to see why. Today, I'm heading to Ubertas Wines in Noriutpa, where I'll be spending the day with Kevin and I can't wait. Hi Kevin, thank you so much for having us at Ubertas Wines in the Barossa Valley. It's my pleasure to have you here. Thank you, it's very beautiful. First thing I've noticed is you have this kind of maze down here that looks like it's growing. Tell me about that. What we're doing here is we're trying to create a family friendly environment and warm welcome environment for our customers. Yeah. We want people to stay, enjoy their wine and food uh, on the lawn or in the maze. It's a big maze. Uh, what we're trying to achieve is create our browser. Uh, food and wine culture here to right. bring attract more people from interstates yep. or even in the future hopefully get uh, international flights to come up here yep. to in, embrace Borussia or Australian culture uh -huh. to know more about Australian. Yeah so yeah. it's not just coming to taste your delicious wines it's a whole family experience. That exactly. You can spend yeah. a day here, have yeah. a picnic, the kids in the maze mum and dad drinking a glass of wine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It's more about the culture thing. Yep. Kevin's agricultural story began on the rice fields of Taiwan working for his father. In 2007, his family migrated to Australia and in 2014 turned a run-down, century-old vineyard into their very own winery and cellar door. You're originally from Taiwan. Yep. How long ago did you come here? Uh, we came here 12 years ago. Okay. Uh, that's when we, our family wanted to, uh, we were looking for a better uh, quality of life, mm -hmm. uh, relaxing lifestyle, uh, um, that's why we came here. Uh, back then we had a long hour working uh, culture uh, back in Taiwan. We used to work 12 hours a, a day, six days a week and we, we thought well this is not uh, the life we want to be no. for the rest of our life. Mm. That's why uh, we were looking for countries that has a uh, relaxing lifestyle. Australia is a very good pick for that. Yeah. Very, very relaxed. yeah. And had you always had in mind that you were going to start a winery? Before we came to Australia, we always wanted, uh, we have a passion, great passion about food and why we want to get involved. Uh, but because in Taiwan, you don't get um, decent land for growing grapes and it's yeah. not a right climate for uh -huh. uh, grape growing. Yeah. Uh, that's why we came to Australia. And um, of course, my brother done his uh, English studying here in South Australia. So he's the first person introduced wine to our uh -huh. family and brought us here. Okay, and you fell in love. Yeah. 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 And well, I still remember the first trip, the first white tour we had here in Brossa. We found Brossa wine is such unique, powerful, um, and very rich in flavor wine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very different wine to compare to the rest of the world. You just have that uniqueness. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and we thought, well, if we can be part of the wine industry, that would make my life happier. <laughs> yeah. Wine makes everyone happier, right? Okay, great. Well, I might go and have a chat to Phil out in the vines and see what he's been doing out there. Yeah. So thank you for this mellow. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Phil, you used to study aircraft engineering in Taiwan. Yes, I did. And now you're here in Australia with a winery. Yeah. Tell me, how did that happen? Well, for the first year, um, I came to Australia just for studying English purpose. And since I tasted the first drop of our great Australian wine, I fall in love with that uh, instantly. So I yep. decided to stay in Australia. You've got beautiful vines here, nice big grapes on there growing. Now you don't use any incesticides or chemicals or anything like that, do you? No, we don't. Um, the purpose is actually want to 
get the minimum uh, input uh, we can. So we use more like introduce more um, beneficial insects into the old vineyard to get the balance between between them, and we don't use uh, um, the herbicides in there. So we hope hope we can get the um, um, more better soil structure uh, uh -huh. into our vineyards. You're creating your yeah. own ecosystem within yeah. without introducing all of the other no. harmful stuff. That's and, right. And how do you think that benefits your grapes and your vines and your wines? Well, there's in need time to improve. For the first year, it was really dry. They have great competition between weeds and vine. Uh -huh. So for the first year, it was really sad. Um, but starting from the second year, we can start seeing the earthworm coming back to our vineyards. Okay. When we step on the vineyard, it's not really hard space, uh, surface now. So it's sort of like, you can a bit bouncy, mm -hmm. a bit softer yeah. uh, than before. And the vines that they're coming back by themselves, they got their own balance um, okay. since year two. This year was, uh, will be our third year, and we we'll see how we go with that, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So I think I might go inside and try a couple of your wines. You're welcome. Great, yeah. thank you. Time to taste some wine right after the break. I've only started my short tour of South Australia and this week I'm in the Barossa Valley catching up with brothers Kevin and Philip at Ubertus Wines. Now it's time to jump inside their brand new modern cellar door where I think Kevin's waiting for me with a few wines to try. Okay Kevin, you have some of your Shirazes for me to try. I'm yep. very excited. What are we going to start with? So we're going to start with our 2017 single vineyard Shiraz. And the Shiraz is from our Royal Vineyard here. We only get 4.5 tonnes per hectare. Okay. So compared to the average here in the Barossa, it's roughly 6 or 7 tonnes per hectare. We use um, French barrels for ageing and we age in French barrels for 18 months. We have 20% new barrels and 80% used barrels. Okay. Yeah, so it does give you very really smooth on the palate. Yeah. And the Shiraz shows you a little bit peppery, spice, flavor. Um, you get blueberry and blackberry flavor after test. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Mmm. Once you decant it, you get that buttery um, uh, flavour texture Very on Very buttery. Yeah. Yeah, and the yeah. berries are delicious in that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, quite like that. And so what was this one called? This is your... Single vineyard Shiraz. Single vineyard. Yeah. And of course, being in the Barossa, the Shiraz is going to be yeah. amazing. So uh, this is a medium to full body wine. It's not a very heavy uh, no, Barossa very... Shiraz, yeah. but it's a, a portable. Um, it's a little bit lighter. So the single vineyard Shiraz is ideal to pair with um, heavy meat like uh, beef, lamb, barbecue, okay. uh, Barbecues, lamb. Barbecues, roasts. Yeah. 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 yeah, definitely. To balance it out with exactly. the meat, and that's a nice light. Yeah. Lighter one. Yeah, right. That's lovely. And then we're going to go a bit heavier body yes, in the next yes, one. Yes, we are, yeah. Okay. So the single vineyard, is that those ones just here where we were before with Phil? Yes. So the, uh, the single vineyard Shiraz is about three, uh, 35 years old. It doesn't produce much, uh -huh. um, but it does give you lovely concentrated flavour and beautiful colour as well. Yeah, and beautiful taste. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I love the Barossa in the summer, but for me, there's no better time to visit than when the weather is cooler. Here, you can snuggle up on a leather couch in front of the big stone fireplace and warm your heart with a glass of Ubertez Shiraz, just like the one I'm about to taste right now. The next one we are going to try is our 2017 Single Vineyard Shiraz Camille Sauvignon blend. We ah, have 85% okay. Shiraz, 15% Camille Sauvignon. Yeah. Uh, 
The Shiraz is uh, 40 years old by, and the Cabernet Sauvignon was planted in back in 1950s, so it's about 70 something years okay. old today, and doesn't give you much every year. We only get 800 kilos a year for the Cabernet Sauvignon. It's very little so, yield. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's why we blend with Shiraz, and again. Uh, it only gives us small berry, very concentrated flavour, uh, good tannins, uh, structures, and yeah, we aged the wine in French barrels for okay, 18 yeah. months. 18 we, months, yeah. Yeah, we use a little bit more new barrels, which is about 30%. Uh, then the rest of the 70%, we use second hand barrels for aging. Okay. okay. You can see the colour is definitely darker and this is our full body Shiraz Kamen Sauvignon. You can pick up a little bit of vanilla and mocha flavour from the, from the notes. Again, smooth is something we aim for our wine. It's so smooth. Yeah. The... Gives you silky and a little bit buttery mm -hmm. as well. And after test, you just get uh, black currant. As black currants. And yeah. um, a little bit uh, French barrels flavour coming back. Yeah. Mm. And the, the body is amazing. That yeah. Lingo. Yeah. It's full body wine, but it's still very smooth on the palate. Yeah, yeah. definitely not uh, overdone with the tannins at all. Yeah. yeah. Ah, it's a tough gig, but somebody's got to do it. That is a very enjoyable wine. Thank you very much. Yes, I think I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I've been told visitors to Ubertess Wines are most likely to find brothers Kevin and Philip behind the tasting bench at the cellar door. And speaking from experience, their warm smiles will make you feel right at home. Okay, the next one we are going to try is our Poitier de Shiraz. So okay. D stands for dry grown, and the Shiraz is from our dry grown block. We never water it until last year because we have really dry weathers for two years here in the Brussels and we lost about 3% of our vine. That's why last year, 2020, we decided to draw out irrigation system to give them a little bit of water and moisture to keep them alive. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, again, it's low yield. We only get three tons per hectare, so that is really, really low. Yeah. Um, but as you can see, the beautiful color. Wow. And very fruity, this one. Lovely colour. Yeah. With this one, we use different types of um, French barrels, okay. which has finer timber. That just means we have to age the wine in new barrels a little bit longer to build okay. up the tannin structures, yeah. white body. Uh, but it does give you really smooth on palate textures on palate, and also um, long finish end. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you get flavours keep coming back, so it's just... The gift that yeah. keeps on giving. Mm. Uh, as you can see, it's spicier compared to the previous one. Mm. Yeah, that's a little bit heavier. Still really smooth. Yeah, yeah. That's really lovely. Thank you. Yeah. What would be your favourite one? So party tea is my favourite one. This Because when, yeah. uh, when you have a um, beef or lamb, this is uh, we'll always drink with the, yeah. Yep. Now I'm getting hungry. So what makes Dragon different to uh, the rest of our vineyard or, or vines? Because uh, they've been 
struggling for 50 years that root system has gone so deep in the soil right. and we believe that's why they have a different uh, flavors and uh, better white body and structures yeah um, however it doesn't give you much grapes um, yeah it doesn't give you much yields a year that's uh -huh. the only problem but you do appreciate the flavor it produces. Yeah, definitely. It's just so juicy. You every time will crush it. Yeah. Um, and when you have a good wine, good juice, you usually end up with good quality wine as well. Yeah. Yeah. So the vines and the grapes are relying more on the nutrients in the ground rather than just the water. To yeah. To grow and develop. Yeah. That's what you're kind yeah. Of tasting more of. Yeah. Exactly. And now. Uh, because we have, um, we just had a irrigation system installed last year. We now just give them a little bit of water, give them a little bit of moisture to keep them alive. Because the root system has gone so deep, it doesn't produce more or it doesn't improve the quality right. by giving them more water. But it needs some. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, water here in the Borussia is very expensive, so yeah. <laughs> it won't be a smart way to... Um, okay. Yeah. How much rain would you get here on average in here? Average, we should be getting 550 mil a year, but in 2019, 2020, we only end up with 300 or 295 mil a year. That's why we have That's really dry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So when you have a dry year, those dry ground will show um, inky, very deep uh, purple mm -hmm. inky f colors. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's when we can make full body, uh, really powerful Shiraz. Yeah, so sometimes it works in your favor if there's yeah. a, a low rain year. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, I guess you need to adapt to the weather, right? So yeah. Low rain, we make what we can. Yes. High rain, we make what we can. Yeah, right? exactly yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you've done an amazing job. Your wines are fantastic. So thank you so much for thank you. me. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. had a lovely time here at Ubertus Winery in the Barossa Valley. I'm going to enjoy this glass of Shiraz and I'll see you next time.